Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Able Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. I'm your host, Jimmy Graham. Uh, joining you today on a uh, pre-recorded session from Wide Open Saloon in Sedalia, Colorado. So first off, I want to thank Todd Hills and his staff for accommodating us. They're opening today, so they're going to have people in here eating. It's a beautiful area. I believe it was the Buckskin before and the revamp and everything. It's gorgeous. Uh, Come check it it out. Patriotic guy. Met him last weekend supporting the Patriot uh, rally with my buddy Tig. We had kind of some guys working the safety part of that and, uh, and, and met him there. Um, joined today by none other than Neil Pinkham, Able Shepherd 014, aka The Sage. What's up, brother? Awesome to be here, Jimmy. Thanks for the <laughs> invite. Pretty cool stuff. Um, we started thinking about this, and we were, I was just kind of going through my head on what this was going to look like. Neil popped into my head, and I invited him. I know he's going to uh, really, really enjoy this as just a patriotic American walking free on the earth. Uh, I want him sitting at this table. Uh, as I kind of go through my honored guest list, this is the first time we've done this before. We're doing a WebEx kind of virtual meeting uh, with my buddies, and I, I want to caveat this with... Um, Man, I know these guys as, as Gary and Scotty, and I always have. Uh, when I read kind of their intros, it, it, you know, it's it's just cool that, to just remind. Uh, I was talking to Gary about this. It's kind of weird for us. Uh, there's that quiet professional. There's that that. Um, that thing that we we know and respect. Uh, there's also a new piece that I'm kind of stepping into where people need to step into leadership roles in politics and small business and all this kind of stuff. Um, but we're just not real comfortable talking about this stuff. So when I read their stuff, I'm one honored to know them. These are my buddies. And I think it's gonna show that that this is just regular guys, man. We're just good Americans that stepped out uh, to do something else with their lives and, and blinked and it's been 25 years, man. And it's just good stuff. So I'm gonna try to keep it together, but there's a lot of worlds coming together for me on this one. Uh, Memorial Day, I wanna entitle this one, We Have Not Forgotten. Um, this is, oh, they lost me. So got me. We're gonna keep rolling. Okay, we're gonna roll. We're gonna get you back. Um, so for right now, um, I want to just go ahead and knock out their uh, their their intros. So we've got Gary Ellis, Bud's class two hundred eight. Who yeah two hundred eight? Um, SEAL Team Eight, SEAL Team Six, Hunter Ton near Coastal Captain uh, <laughs> Vessel License. Did the blue to green program. Uh, going into the Army and Aviation, the TF-160 SOAR Special Operations Aviation Regiment, so Navy and Army vet. Um, oh, i got to throw in Airborne. So all of us are Airborne. That's part of the SEAL team thing. But the uh, SOAR, you know, is uh, TF-160 Airborne. Uh, fully mission qualified Black Hawk pilot at D-1 160th. Uh, retired and became a private sector helo pilot. Uh, fixed, wing cap- fixed wing captain for the airlines. Commercial airline transport c- certificate. Small business owner and a family man. A lot going on. Uh, and then Master Chief Scott Latelier, Bud's Class 210, SEAL Team 8, SEAL Team 6, SEAL Team 2, SEAL Team 4, SEAL Team 10, uh, served in Afghanistan, Iraq, Uganda, Chad, Somalia, many other areas, uh, training missions to South America all over, still serving active duty, going on 25 years in July. Congrats, brother. Thank you for your continued service. Love you guys. What's happening, Scotty? Okay, so um, that's it. We'll see you guys next. No, that's a, that's a mouthful. I love these guys. Like to me, it's Gary and Scotty. So we're, we're going to jump right off into it. Um, I have no idea how long this is going to take. We're going to try to keep it towards an hour. We just got a lot of ground to cover. So uh, I'm going to start off talking about Veterans Day uh, versus Independence Day versus Memorial Day because a lot of people lump those together. They don't know what they are. I make it a point for my kids to know the meaning of Memorial Day. And then we'll just pick it up from there. Uh, and uh, Veterans Day, uh, just, just for those who don't know this, and I'm hoping everybody knows it, Veterans Day is a federal holiday in the United States observed annually November 11th for honoring military veterans, that is persons who have served in the United States Armed Forces. So when you're thinking of that, that is Veterans Day. That's what that's for. Hey, thank you for serving. Everybody appreciates it. I think we should appreciate that, and I appreciate the businesses who honor that all year round. Independence Day celebrates our nation's independence uh, independence as united, free, and independent states, marking July 4th, 1776 as a date to be remembered. That brings us to Memorial Day. So Memorial Day, 
a specific day, it's a special day, that we honor and mourn the military personnel who, dialed, who died while, while serving in the United States Armed Forces. So that's a big, big deal to us. Um, we're just, this is gonna go all over the place. Like I said, I'm gonna try to keep it together because there's a lot of personal stories that are gonna come out um, today. Uh, but on Memorial Day, um, that's another thing that, I'll just, I'll just say it, for some of us, Memorial Day is year long. Um, I think about guys all the time. I know these guys do that were part of our lives that aren't with us anymore. And I'm gonna end with a, with a note um, and a toast uh, about these guys. I wanna just throw it out there and caveat it with, man, the, this is a slippery slope. It's a touchy subject because we never wanna miss, um, we never wanna miss anybody. So when we're honoring these people, first of all, I wanna say we're honoring all who have basically sacrificed everything so we can live free um, on this nation. So um, that being said, we still good BK? Cause I got something going on my head. My headphones. There we go. That sounds better. Uh, anyways, so for everybody, we have not forgotten and that we, we absolutely honor every one of the folks today that have uh, served our country, gave all, um, you know, so we can live free in this country. Um, so this is on today's Saturday, Monday's Memorial Day. Um, we're going to be hosting a deal out here where we're going to be doing the Murph with a bunch of people. Pinkham's stepping up to do the barbecue and the grilling. It's my job, brother. <laughs> he loves being cookie. He loves getting out there. He's got a way with a smoker. Uh, I, I'm blessed to have people in my life. Gary Ellis was one of them that introduced me to Louisiana cooking and uh, and crawfish boils and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'd say it's got to be the, uh, the the ribeye roast. You know, you know my favorite um, pork style, the country style pork ribs, all that kind of stuff. Um, guys, if you don't mind, I'm going to kick it right off with uh, with Lance. Um, I was going to kind of ease into this, but one of our, and I believe, I don't know um, if, it, if, it, if it is for you guys, and you can share that, but Scott, if you don't mind introducing who Lance, is, uh, who Lance was, our brother, that was our first inner circle. The, 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 um, we lose guys all the time, the SEAL teams, because of the nature of that work, and we all know what we're getting into. Um, he was the first guy that was in our crew all day, every day. Uh, that we lost. You mind throwing out an intro for Brother Lance? Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I met Lance back in probably 2000, oh, excuse me, 1995, when we uh, started Buds together uh, in the same Buds class, uh, same Hell Week. Uh, both of us eventually got rolled into uh, the next Buds class, but eventually graduated together, moved on to uh, SEAL Team 8, where we met Jimmy, where we met Gary. and two platoons together. I mean, we were roommates. Uh, our, our careers pretty much shadowed each other for the next uh, eight to nine years until uh, when we both uh, made it across, made it to a development group and we just went to different squadrons. But the circle was tight from, from, from day one, being uh, pretty much swim buddies and bugs all the way up into, you know, the tragic day we lost him in 2008. Just a you know, the quintessential swim buddy, best, you know, one of the best friends, best team guys, selfless. I mean, you know, it goes on and on. I mean, I'll leave it up to, you know, you and Gary, to, you know, share your stories. Lance was like, you know, he was, he was my guy, you know, out of our circle, the four of us, you know, it was, you know, you know, Jimmy Graham, it was Gary Ellis, Scott Latelli, and it was Lance Paparo. You know, it was, it was Scott and Lance and it was Jimmy and Gary. And that was our circle. And, um, we took a huge hit. It, it devastated a lot of us. And it's one of those times where, you know, on a day like, you know, on Memorial Day, you know, you want to take that time and remember those guys because you'll never meet guys like that again, you know, you know from where I see it. Yeah. Amen, yeah, brother. No good intro. Gary, anything to add on that or chime in on Brother Lance? On to that fellow today? Oh, man, always something easy and good to say about Lance, man. Uh, fantastic operator all tatted up just a wonderful soul to be around uh great sense of humor uh loved you know so so many uh good people around him he enjoyed having a good time he didn't mind uh, getting off the couch and helping whether it was to party or or to help develop a party man uh just a, a great human being to have around and uh and and I, I love that we think about him often man uh, uh least of all you know good lord man all the ride that was put together mostly by you jimmy what a testament uh to a friend and to a, a committed friendship man it's it's, it's written and, and it's a privilege and pleasure to be here with you uh and to and to discuss this very stuff for memorial day weekend 
Hey, brother, quick question for you. What's green 13? Green 13. <laughs> I know that's a longer conversation, man. But what, what do we got? Actually, guys, I committed to buying the green 13.com. So we own that now if we want to have some fun. With that. <laughs> Good Lord, let us get to be our 60s and 70s where we can write about it and have fun. Green 13 is a it's a physical place, but I think now to us, it's also uh, it's a captured place in time, man, where anybody who uh, in the doorway at Green 13 probably uh, likely had a good time unless you got on Jimmy's bad side at the fireside acting, acting dumb. And then you might have had something else. But um, just a, it was it was a little uh, a, a tiny place on the water that we rented and for two or three years there it was it was the hub for all goodness that was away from the city and the 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 people that we attracted to that place um helped to to uh immortalize just a great time and and friends and people getting together and putting human hands and effort into one place and great barbecues and great fires and music and holidays and and even sometimes the better stuff was uh was when you might show up out there by yourself and do a, a a camp out, you know, um, you caught me off guard with that one, man. It's, it's, uh, green 13 was just a, it was a fantastic thing. I'm glad we all did it together. I know I was right up, right up there on the, uh, on the paper. That truly was a team effort that I will always appreciate. Brother, I can't say enough about green 13. Just thinking about it makes me happy. The, uh, if I could kind of paint a picture because the city that you're referring to is Norfolk, Virginia beach area. Um, Scotty was a little more inclined. He was like the guy, the, uh, the, the, when we go to the clubs with Scotty, <laughs> you know, just, it, he just, he loved that surrounding and being around people and all that kind of stuff. And, and we entertained it as well too. But, uh, I just remember specifically, um, certain nights when Gary would just give me that look and be like, you ready? And we'd head out there early in the night, just head out there, start a fire. And it's, it's a little tiny, what do we guess? I mean, a thousand square feet, brother maybe yeah yeah and you could kick a rock off the deck into the intercoastal waterway and it, it resembled the bayou you know not exactly for somebody who knows it better but to me it looked it was just this welcoming waterway we'd be out there hanging out and then here comes scotty we draw him out there and and it was just it was commonplace to have lance to have scott to have gary ellis jimmy graham just hanging out burning wood and then before you know it here comes another car and another car and before the whole club bar scene whatever would be hanging out there burning wood and hanging out um, couldn't fit that many people in there so and I'm not I'm not exaggerating filling a, a, a living room up with Gary Ellis is also not on this piece of paper is an accomplished piano plunker from uh, from Bourbon Street um, and he would be just entertaining everybody and literally there wasn't even standing room people sitting and walking over legs to go use the restroom or to get outside or whatever and it was just it was just goodness to, to so that's if you're wondering what uh, team guys or military folks do when they're not you know serving this country and, and, and out there on the front lines and doing all that stuff that's what they're doing man they're living life and uh, developing relationships and brotherhoods so it's a big big deal bang man green 13 so uh tell you what i want to i want to go ahead and shotgun you guys with a uh just a favorite lance memory because i do i want to take a second and just honor um our brother and uh and then talk about the ride for a second but uh fa favorite memory if you can think of one there at his uh, memorial service because it's the most i think it encompasses exactly who lance was as a friend and as a, as a human being um it was 2005 i believe outside of my uh, shoulder surgery and uh lance, lance, he can take me you know to the hospital and he's like yeah sure what time i'll be there the, the big part of the story is that was when I believe it was uh, and then Storm Ivan hit Hampton Roads and put pretty much a good portion of Hampton Roads in the water. And when we got to Portsmouth, Portsmouth is pretty low, uh, below sea level. So now we're hitting these flooded streets and Lance's, you know, you know, sporty SS Camaro, just you know, you know, just that was Lance's beast machine and everyone everyone got a ride in everyone loved it and uh, he was very proud of it anytime you sat in that car it was like sitting in a car that just came off the shirt floor that's how well he took care of it and we hit uh the main ro the main road going into portsmouth and we hit some really deep water and we flooded it out i mean i got out of the car i was getting late he's like hey man i'll take care of this i don't want you to be late so go ahead and you know keep going so I walked the rest of the way to the hospital and uh, eventually his car was ruined. I mean, total, 
totaled, yeah. Water got into the cylinders, engine was destroyed, had to have a, a wrecker come pick it up. And I, this is unbeknownst to me, because now I'm in the hospital, I'm waking up and there's Jimmy, there's Rachel, there's, uh, there's, there's Lance, and I'm just like, uh, hey, because that was Lance's car. Lance loved that machine more than, you know, just about anything else in his, in, you know, possessions. And he just said, nah, man, that car's, that car's done. It's totaled. And I just said to him, look, I, I felt horrible. I said, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. And he's just like, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm just sorry. You had to walk the rest of the way in the pouring rain. And that just, that resonated with me right then and there. Like, yeah, that was something he loved. It was, you know, uh, something he took care of and he cherished, but it was just a possession. It didn't mean anything. You know, his friendships, his relationships with his buddies meant more to him than anything else. Gary, you got one? Because I just thought of one. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I had a couple for, for Lance. I mean, uh, I, number one, I loved when he showed up to our parties out there at Green 13. It, it didn't have to be a party. If the inner circle was coming out and uh, Lance would – of course, in, in good team guy and good good uh, good person uh, fashion, uh, he, he never showed up empty handed. He always liked to try to bring something different for us to cook, and I really enjoyed that. And he had a sense of humor with that. Uh, Challenging Gary with shark meat. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, I don't think I'd ever cooked uh, uh, mussels before, or uh, <laughs> I even wrote it down. It was. Uh, it was scallops. I never even heard of scallops. There's no scallops in South Louisiana, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't want to make it about me, but I, I defaulted to just cutting up some onions and put some some good butter in the pan, and and, <laughs> and they were they were wonderful. And I I really thanked Lance for that. That was great. But uh, well, I can't help bringing up what was already memorialized with the boating that we did with Lance, and that barefooting was so awesome, man. Just not a testament to him not giving up, but just his sense of humor throughout the whole thing was outstanding, man, you know? Uh, and and like uh, like Scott was saying, man, he loved his cars and I loved his motorcycles. And uh, I was I was smiling as Scott was telling the story because Lance called me and said, hey, man, I know you, you know a little bit about motors. And, and he told me the whole deal. And and it's just like Scott said, hey, once, once water got into that intake manifold, it probably busted all of the connecting rods and everything. And... and Lance just put that one behind him and went and got another one, man. <laughs> That's right. He was not afraid of the job. And, uh, you know, it, it might be a little a, a dark side of, of what we're talking about. But for the viewers and the listeners out there, man, the way that he died uh, is, you know, it's it's tough enough to to uh, to test yourself and even want to go and try out for Buds and then make it and then get to the SEAL team and everything that it takes to get to your trident and then, you know, as we all know, it takes at least five years to make a good rounded frog, man. The way that he died jumping those bundles, that was no, that was man town. That was not for the the faint of heart or somebody who's who's not committed um, uh, to doing what they have to do, you know, and things went really wrong that day. But I, I want the listeners out there to know that not only, you know, was he memorialized as a good, strong, tough man and seal. That very thing that that he lost his life doing was uh, was nothing short of the heroic stuff, man. Jumping bundles is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, amen to that, brother. <clears throat> the um, we ended up doing the Lance McCarr Memorial Ride. Um, Scott, you want to talk about how that thing got birthed? I mean, basically, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about how Lance and I he introduced me to a movie called The uh, Long Way Round TV show or whatever with the guys going around the world sparked that we talked about doing it we put it on the back burner he went off uh you know to uh, damn neck uh i went off to uh you know, to the agency other places to start a family and it just went kind of on the back burner it just never really happened we lost him in 2008 i regretted that i mentioned it to you at the funeral scotty about that whole deal and you didn't skip a beat man so you want to pick it up there no yeah uh it was just one of those things that, you know, we were just in the back of our mind, just like you said, we were looking forward to for, for a long time. And like, we were just thinking about how awesome an adventure this was going to be. And in the beginning, it just was just the, the bare bones of just throwing backpacks on and putting a gypsy rig on the back of your motorcycle. And we're just going to ride until we get tired and then just pull off the side of the road and just set up camp. And, um, and we were good with that. And that's what Lance was like more excited about was just the, the rustic aspect of it, you know, not doing it in any kind of, uh, you know, plush or, 
or glamorous fashion, just like roughing it like a, like a team guy would. When we you know, eventually lost him and we were at uh, his uh, memorial, and I believe it was you, Jimmy, who said, you know, it's a shame that we weren't going to be able to get able to do that ride anymore. And I said, you know, just, well, why can't we just still do it? We'll just make a memorial ride. We'll just, you know, whatever. We'll just swipe the credit cards and we'll just go big and just, you know, make it an adventure and we'll just do it in his name. So I think that's what kind of like spawned it. And then the, the seed was planted and Jimmy Grant just, you know, watered it and, and grew it into something that was beyond what I think any of us can even imagine it could have been. Yeah, that's an uh, amazing, amazing time that I got to see you guys again. Um, at the time when we launched it, I didn't even have a motorcycle. I used to ride Harleys around Virginia Beach with, uh, with Lance. And then uh, I remember I said to you, I was like, hey, you, know, you said, well, let's just do it. Let's do it in his honor. And I said, next year? You're like, I'm deployed next year. How about the next year, 2010? You're like, all right, let's do it. And we put it on the calendar, protected it. And then we ended up riding 12,000 miles to Alaska from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Seward, Alaska, and back. And uh, Gary Ellis, you joined us. We got sponsored by BMW. I still have that bike in my garage. <laughs> it's uh, I painted it. It's not blue anymore. But uh, a GS and uh, just literally once in a lifetime kind of deal. I've been on other rides, but there will never be that one again. So that got purchased. And I want to encourage people too. That was one of my goals today is to honor Lance. That if you have time this weekend. Memorial Day, or within the next week or so, uh, go on iTunes because that our our footage did get purchased by Anchor Bay Entertainment. Uh, we raised money for the Seal Foundation. They ended up making a documentary called "The Ride for Lance." You can find that on iTunes. You can find that online and watch "Ride for Lance." And it's truly uh, some patriotic Seal Team guys going out to honor their buddy. Uh, and and I'm proud of what we did. So appreciate you guys, Gary. I'll kick it over to you, brother. Um, you have to honor somebody this Memorial Day. Again, we're honoring everybody. But uh, if you've got somebody at the top of your mind you want to give a shout out and a little bit of uh, history about them, that's what we're doing today. So can you take it? Okay. Uh, this was a tough one, man. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a hybrid solution, if you don't mind. Uh, because when, when it came to trying to pick a person, it was difficult. Uh, and if I'm going to try to say that as best I can and what I mean by that is is really piggybacking off of what you said man Memorial Day is for all who died and and honestly as I grow as the decades fall off the calendar uh even the dudes who go way back when America was started man you know you think we lost in the civil war we lost 500,000 on each side man it's a lot of people over the over the decades over you know over the time since America was started that lost their lives for this incredible nation that we have very prosperous and giving nation. So picking this was hard. So what I did, gents, is uh, I picked a handful of the guys that I knew over over the years, and uh, and I'm going to end off with one. And I try to keep it as simple and as poignant as possible. Uh, near and dear to my heart, the first guy that I that I knew very well and who died uh, in an ambush in Afghanistan was Tom Retzer. Um, good man, good family man, and. Uh, I tried to do the, the research. I know his family. I know his wife. They, they live in Las Vegas now. And I think his one of his son's guys is going to the Naval Academy. So good on him, man. Tommy Valentine also at Damn Neck lost him. He's the first guy I ever saw climb a seven millimeter rope. I was so impressed. <laughs> a seven millimeter rope is about the size of your finger, man. And it was in the pool at Damn Neck. We were doing water, of course. Uh, and he taught me how to do it, you know, uh, he was a little guy like me, and, uh, and he was a good a good guy, man. Um, I always think of Tommy B. Uh, uh, from Extortion 1-7, man, I know uh, you, you guys might have known some different guys. I remember Lou Langless and Tom Ratzleff. You know, uh, Rat, you, the, the image in my mind is that you, you never see him without a smile on his face, man. And he had been out to Green 13 a handful of times as well. Lou Langless was the West Coast sounding guy. U.S. Navy SEAL National Exposure. <laughs> really fun guy, man. Exposed. Um, and then and a couple other guys I always remember. Uh, we did some tar some parachute testing. Um, and I don't want to get too far off base when I talk about these guys, but they, it was near and dear when when you know that they're no longer around. You guys probably both remember from uh, from Red Wings, uh, from SEAL teammate Jeff Taylor. I remember Jeff very well. And Jacques Fontaine from New Orleans, man. Good dudes. Uh, just wonderful guys to be around. Uh, and I think about them on Memorial Day. And 
The next two names I'm going to mention, I know both of you guys know them. And I would like the listeners and the viewers to think, you know, when you think Navy SEAL, a lot of the, the American public probably thinks big, tough, mean, scary guy, you know, full of tats and all frowning and making people uncomfortable in a restaurant. But uh, when I think of Nate Hardy and Mike Koch, I can't think of two better human beings to be around. Just good sense of humor like I, I normally like about uh, my favorite team guys. Uh, he's very warm and so helpful, man. Whatever you needed from either one of those guys, the fact that they both died on and the way that they did, man, um, it always – it's on my heart because I just – I love those guys to death, man, I, I, and I miss them. That was on uh, 4 February in 2008 also. Uh, and the last gent that I'd like to bring up is uh, is Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Rob Baldwin. So uh, he died in uh, September of 2010. And uh, a little bit more about his story, but basically I married his widow and I'm, I'm trying to help raise his four kids and give them something that I, you know, through the years and through the days and weeks that we, we live and grow together, I think of Bobby and what he might want to give to these kids. And I try to you know, to do my best to do that for him. But um, a testament to the type of leader that he was, man, on the night that he died, in a Black Hawk, and, I, and and they were in support of special operations. They were, uh, I think there were three SEALs who died on the on the helo that night with him. He wasn't even behind the controls, guys. He, he was monitoring two junior pilots. Uh, he wanted to go and check out. He had heard there were problems or whatever. Not that we're trying to bring that in a, in a negative light, but he went out there and put himself in the mix to make sure that things were going right and lost his life. And that's a message that I share with them often. You know, when things get a little too, um, um, when the time is right, I try to remind, remind them of that, you know, from time to time. Like, hey, your, your dad was quite the man to, to do what he did, that commitment, that like, I'm, I'm not asking somebody else to go do it. I'm jumping in the seat and I'm going to check it out for myself. And he lost his life. So um, uh, that, that, that is always very, very powerful to me, you know, uh, and I love on Memorial Day because, you know, you guys can probably testify that as, as we do the day to day and you do the grind, we, we forget about some of this stuff. So thinking about Bobby and a handful of, full of those names that, that I just uh, brought up and, and Lance, and I can't wait to hear some of the guys that, that you guys might bring up. But um, it's very, very powerful stuff. Thanks, brother. That's uh, that's huge, man. We were talking kind of before this, um, you know, about the role you're playing now and raising raising those four kids, man. I was about to lose it on my porch when we were talking earlier today, man. That's what it's supposed to look like, man. That's amazing stuff. And then uh, you and D fell in love, and, and uh, amen, brother. Amen. Scotty, anybody come to mind, brother, you want to honor? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you and Gary pretty much nailed the the ones that were close to us, obviously, with the SEAL teammate days, our days at Damneck. I mean, we could go on, you know, down the list of names of the, you know, the two greatest tragedies within NSW with, uh, you know, Operation Red Wings and uh, Extortion 17. There's too many names, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a tragedy to, in, in all in itself. But the, the three that I would like to uh, kind of memorialize is because it's for kind of a different reason. I mean, we lose guys in combat all the time, and we, you know, that's somewhat of a, an easy acceptance because they're doing they're, they're they're doing the they're doing what we love to do they're they're serving their country and they know the risk especially in the special warfare community it's kind of a you know a given you might not come back from that mission so it's a little bit more palatable or acceptable for us to, to understand that one uh training you know typically we lose um three seals a year to training you know, in you know diving and skydiving and uh just you know in, in, in accidents and it's and that's just another you know hard truth but the ones that have hit me hard hit me the hardest recently have been the three last uh, memorials that i've went to and those were for uh john hannon dave collins and chad wilkinson all three of them tragically took their own lives and the sad thing is we really can't put our finger on exactly why i mean they had you know you know long and uh careers, successful careers, um, two were retired, uh, one was retired, and or, I'm sorry, two of them were retired, John Hennon and Tom were retired, but they never really displayed many signs that would say, hey, this guy's having issues, we need to go get him help. So the first, first room of the park, 
it's like guys are still guys are still dealing with and guys are still fighting back here at home and you know one thing i've tried to champion for the last few months uh almost two years now actually is bringing that awareness through social media and through uh different avenues and mediums just to let people know that hey guys have come back and they're still dealing with stuff and um it's it's something that is definitely um, an issue and we need to we need to address it. So with that, I would say, yeah, those three have been the ones that have, you know, kind of hit me hardest because the why behind it is just really not 100 percent there. Yeah. Hey, man, brother, the uh, the Chad Wilkinson. Um, I was not expecting that phone call and Scott has kept me in the loop and appreciate, you know, you being kind of uh, the voice in my ear from the active duty side. Um, kind of kind of tracking on where guys go and what they do but that that phone call um when you talk about top performers at that level um turn into that in a moment of weakness um it is it is hard to explain i think i think even more so and i, I can't say more so but navy seals um you know already kind of put themselves out there and aspired to be something and then became it and then looking for that next thing um, you guys kind of know what I do back here, just trying to look at it at, uh, at, at providing some kind of validation for men and sharing them that experience. Um, not to make it about me, but this is this is a, a national deal, man. Like people literally, they're not sure what their purpose is and they're looking for another thing. Um, that is something that's going to be a challenge, even on the elite levels. We're not we're not immune from that. So like to have these guys that are out there, you know, tip of the spear, these larger than life figures, you know, that we, we all carry this, these things. And, and need that validation from one another. So, uh, man, I kind of, you know, just like you guys, you know, wouldn't have seen anything. Kind of wish I'd have been uh, more in touch with with uh, Chad because, again, back in those first days at Silty Mate and stuff, he was right there with us. So, just one of those guys that just used to be hanging out, was climbing the ladder, could pretty much do anything he set his mind to. And a moment of weakness, uh, we lost him. And I don't, I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what what else more to say than that. Then beautiful family, you know, beautiful wife, uh, amazing kiddos, uh, and it's and it's an absolute tragedy. So I'm hoping I hope that the active duty community is really pursuing that. I know on our end we work with vets all the time, and we're just trying to uh, create that camaraderie or that thing, you know, to try to just try to get to know them enough to see the signs, like to see people and uh, and uh, create those relationships enough to where and Gary, man, I can. I want to throw this out there, man. I remember both you guys. We've had some really, really tough conversations. Gary, in particular, man. I said I remember sitting at Green Thirteen, beer in our hand, late, late in the night, and talking deeply about God, about meaning, about all this kind of stuff. And it started generating these thoughts, man, that haven't that haven't ended. You know, how do we make ourselves better, and how do we make ourselves stronger? And you guys know me, and I know you guys. This will beat your chest and try to get on a movie and do all this kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, those guys are just as hollow. As, as some of the dudes you see, you know, in, in any aspect of life, uh, just because they've got a trident on, the, on their chest uh, doesn't change that. But I think that guys that, that continue to do that thing that got us every single day, you know, I, I'll pray with my kids and how do I please make me a better dad? And they're like, you're the best dad ever. I'm like, you know, you, you deserve the best dad. So make me the best dad that I can possibly be, because that's that's going to be a never ending thing. And I mean, if uh if we can learn from that, anything, you know, from, from our from our fallen brothers, no matter how they went down, you know, like I said, if they served our country, they're heroes. And uh, whether they went down on the front lines, it was a training accident, or even, you know, taking their own life. And I know that can be like, you know, shun, it's kind of like, oh, don't bring that one up. No, absolutely bring that one up. Uh, that one needs to be talked about as well. Chad is a good man. That doesn't change ever, you know, on the way that, that on that ended. So, man, I love that guy. And I think about him a lot. Nate Hardy, you said Nate Hardy, man. I'm not sure what. He's just been popping up on my mind. Um, I, uh, as we move on, we appreciate these guys, man. They just creep in there and they just pop up, and you just have a memory of, of hanging out or a conversation or something like that. And that's one that I picked, and I just wanted to kind of honor him. Like you mentioned, February fourth, two thousand eight, serving uh, during Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, died from wounds sustained in small arms fire during combat operations in Balad, Iraq. So also killed with him was Mike Koch. So two just great. Fun loving guys, you know. Um, Nate, Scott, like there's a bunch of just good looking guys that are hanging out, love life, and uh, it just miss those guys, man. So I, th I love the fact that we haven't forgotten them, and it just, just, just saying their names just feels good, man. Um, I don't know. Gonna, ch gonna, gonna shift gears here just for a second. Nice to see you, Scotty. Nice to see you, Gary. 
Hey, I do have a guy that I want to honor here, going back quite a ways now, back to Vietnam and Cedar Falls, Iowa. So about when I was in fourth grade, we had a family move next door. They had boys in their family and girls. We had boys and girls in our family. So I was a fourth grader, and Clark Barron was a seventh grader. So we became fast friends. Great to have an older, tougher buddy in your team all the time, getting through high school and junior high. So we were tight. We went through high school. We went through college together. He was three years older, so he took off in 71 and joined the Air Force. This was hot and heavy times in Vietnam. Cambodia was breaking loose. Hold on one second, guys. All right, picking back up. 71, he took off, joined the Air Force, and he was in training down in Texas. And about, let me hold that up there. Maybe that's better. Sorry about that. Uh, about early 73 down in Del Rio, Texas, they were in T-38s, and they were, it was a training mission once again, and they were practicing formation landings. And he had said just before that he was not comfortable or worried about this. I can remember all our friends talking to his wife, and he had said it back on one of the calls, and he ended up stalling that T-38 on final pancaked it on, burned him badly. He lived about a week and ended up dying of pneumonia and all the things that go with a bad fire burning. So we lost him. There were a lot of guys we lost, but nobody that I was close to, because at that time, a lot of guys were dying. You hear the stories, but that wasn't a personal deal. Clark was the only personal loss I ever took in relationship to training in combat situations. So here's to Clark. So, I know Scotty loves movie quotes. <laughs> the uh, um, one came up as I was thinking about what we were going to talk about. One, it's always good to talk to you guys. Uh, hope to get you out here at some point and check out this beautiful place, Wide Open Saloon, Sedalia. Um, we know a guy that we served with. The 13 Hours uh, movie kind of resonates with me, obviously, you know, due to the Benghazi tie-in. The fact that I worked with this guy out there, came home during all that. Don't need to mention his name. He's chosen to kind of live uh, out of those circles and all that. But the guy that depicted him was the uh, John Krasinski, I think his name is, from The Office. Is that right, Scott? Yeah. So uh, we'll call him Jack. So uh, Jack Sylvan. I could see this happening on the tarmac. This is in the movie. I don't uh, know how this conversation actually went, but in the movie they talk about um, one guy is kind of complaining about what everybody's going to get, and that guy's going to probably get a promotion, and he's going to retire and get a medal, and he's going to get all that. What do we get out of this? Uh, and he says, we get to go home. Um, that's a, it's a powerful line <clears throat> for me. One of the guys that I want to honor, and I, I know by definition, we just define that while serving in the armed forces. And uh, Ty Wood, he wasn't serving in the armed forces. He was serving as a protective officer for the CIA uh, during that movie. Um, losing that guy, we hit it off. Right off the bat, he was my assistant team lead. So I was the team lead in Benghazi. He was my assistant team lead. Team guy that I didn't know during active duty, but an amazing guy. So we hit it off, started working together. Uh, Bub as well, uh, Glenn Doherty in, in Libya. Didn't quite hit it off as much with him, but did work with him and was an outstanding guy. But Ty just sticks out in my mind. as an amazing guy that had an, uh, a fantastic future. Um, but I know that you know Jack actually uh, lost a very good friend that day in Ty. Um, and talking about how much we value the fact that, that, we, that we get to go home. Um, another movie, and I'll have you guys chime in on this, uh, Saving Private Ryan that spoke to the nation. It was a very gripping movie and all that. There's an end scene when, um, when Tom Hanks' character dies and he says, earn this. Um, they finish the movie with him, uh, st the, the older version of him standing there with his family as he comes to thank you know, Tom Hanks' character. Um, and basically asking his wife if he's, am I a good man? Have I lived a good life? Basically saying, um, you know, did I, did I earn this? Um, I don't know that we could ever earn that, uh, but I firmly believe that it's our job and our duty and our honor to live well. Um, the guys that did make it home, uh, I'll be honest, there's a little bit of guilt. Um, you know, why this guy, not this guy? How do I get, how am I, how do I get to, to raise these kids? How do I get to uh, start a business? How do I get to um, contribute to our nation when these guys didn't? 
Um, you know, you guys know I wear my faith on my sleeve. We've had talks about God, you know, before and draw strength from each other on that. But uh, that is a big, big deal to me. So one of the things that motivates me, and I think by design, I think the, the way the good Lord put this on there is every lesson of my life got me right here, right here sitting at this table in, in beautiful uh, Sedalia, Colorado with uh, two of my best buddies, you know, doing a podcast to try to um, help others draw strength from those guys as well. So uh, you guys got any words on that? Do you guys think about, um, you know, this as much as I do? And uh, do you feel the same way about not just us, but every vet, everybody who's lost somebody, that their, their, uh, their life lessons uh, propel me and motivate me to, uh, to live out today and tomorrow? Scott, let's start with uh, Gary. Man, this is, uh, this, is, this is kind of the good stuff uh, from a certain perspective. I'm going to start off with uh, a life study book that I've recently gotten into, and um, I just I read it back to back. I read other books, but Jordan B. Peterson's book, which is called 12 Rules for Life, um, it has a lot to do with this. And while you were talking about Chad Wilkinson and, and, and guys taking their own lives and things like that, you know, we especially diving deep and in what we did in special operations, uh, one of the things that I don't like that it did to me, and I'm, I'm full circle here, is is it it hardened me a little bit too much. In other words, it took it took some of the love out of my picture. Like some, I, I can be very uh, be very dry and and uh, seemingly not to care. But I, I think that was um, that was a piece of what you get from going over there and doing some of that stuff. All that being said, um, the the thing that I gravitate to now with what you're talking about is the, the basic premise of this life is suffering. If you're not suffering now, we'll wait 15 or 20 minutes and you will be, uh, if it's, if it's something in your life right now, you can bet, you can bet your bottom dollar that winter is on the way. There's hope that summer is on the way. What do we, what do we do with this information? Well, what we do the absolute best you can. Day, and that's how you put meaning into your life. That's that's where we get, like, why should we do? It's from every single day, seemingly non-significant choices to try to do a little bit better. 1% better tomorrow and 2% better the next day and on and on and on to try to live a rich and full life from another movie that I like. But um, I think there is a lot of depth there. I think, uh, man, when it comes to just like you, I've thought many nights, like, why why them and not me or why me and not them or whatever the case might be. Uh, I try like heck as a uh, as a default to have a bl blind faith, blind faith. And I'm in these days, as again, like I like to say recently, as the decades fall off the calendar. I try not to make it about me like, well, the, the Lord has a special reason for me. Hey, man, I'm just another sled dog pulling the chain, man. You know, and, and that to me, I get a lot of a lot of internal joy out of that as I grow. Not that I might have some special purpose, but just that I might be I might be quantified enough to pull the sled. You know that I, I really like that blue collar thinking that, um, that trying to embrace the more humble side of that big deep dark stuff that we're talking about like hey gary go out and go out and do your best put your mouthpiece in and move forward every day uh and and as we get older that might not always mean behind the gun you know try to be good to your children try to be good to the the, the world around you uh and just a, a quick sidebar a, a lesson that somebody showed me recently was like hey why do you want to do what you want to do for a reason like, you want to make some money you want to do this and they said well Ask yourself why and write it down and then write down, okay, I want to make some money for me and my family or whatever the goal might be. And then go under that and write why again and do that five times. And if you put some thoughtful, you know, it took me two or three days to do it, but I finally came out with two words and I'm going to share them with you. And they are contribution and character development. It's the yin and the yang. It's the, uh, the order and chaos. It's, it's, it's the you and me that we get to go forward together contribution what does that mean oh man you guys know from what we're bringing and what we've done we can offer everything from helping someone out at the grocery store to doing exactly what we're trying to do to reach other americans and let them know like 
It doesn't matter who or where you are, where you came from. You, you're going to fight the same demons as everybody else. And it's, it's a fight that can hopefully be won, uh, depending on where you're at in your life. But uh, contribution and character development, man, character development to me, it just means like it's, it's that those choices every day, try to make ourselves better for, for the good of the group, for those around us. You know, there is some selfishness in it because it takes discipline, you know, but that discipline can be can be uh, pushed out to the to the community and, and your families, of course, and the good of the group. And I always like to to gravitate back toward is this going to be good for my family, for the for the community, for the country, you know, for the for the human race. Um, I don't know if that exactly answered the question, but that's that's kind of where my deep thoughts are these days. First motorcycle ride. You know, it's like we're all we're all leaders and we're all teachers. You're leading me to heaven or hell, and it's up to me if I follow or not. And then, you know, as far as all being teachers, you're teaching me what to do, what not to do, or what not to do, and it's on me whether I follow that or not. So, we should that. Sorry, I'm going to give up my uh... <laughs> drink up, Bubba. Eat up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Scotty, what you got? Oh, great. How, how, how do I follow that one up? Right, that was perfect. Dude. <laughs> do good stuff. No. Um, but no, I mean, Gary, you kind of touched on it in the beginning. And it's something that I thought about early in my career once um, I started doing well from my first combat deployment. You know, I was, you know, I was a single guy. So when some of my buddies would go down and they had, you know, you know, beautiful families, good God fearing men. And I'm like, why them? Not me. I'm single. I, you know, it, it affected me to the point where like, hey, I just got to, you know, God's got a plan for everybody. And no matter how many times I see, I go to a memorial or I see, you know, a guy, you know, that we that we lose along the way. You know, one thing, you know, you know, my wife keeps telling me is like, you know, God has a purpose. You know, you're here for a reason. If it was them and not you, that means you have a you, God has a plan for you and you have to figure out what it is and you have to lead live the best life that you know how. And be the and for me that's a that's a personal uh, reflection to be self aware of everything I have going on in my life to the people around me to you know my wife be, to be the best husband to my children to be the best father and to my friends just to be the best you know the best person I can to help them out no matter what it is you know I remember the saying you know be kind to everyone because you know they're fighting a battle you know nothing about and as many times as I catch myself yelling at people while I'm driving I'm just thinking okay well you know what. That's not that's not the way to handle it because you just you just don't know everybody and it's it's selfish to think that way. So, kind of going on a little bit of a tangent, but at the end of the day, I just I try to just look at myself and like, who do I want to be? Who do I want my children to see me uh, become one day? Because I want them to be a reflection of that. So, I just try to live by the golden rule. You know, I just try to treat people the way I want to be treated. You know, and. Uh, like I said, just try to be the best example I can for my children and uh, and to be a good family man, because I'm here by the grace of God. So I'm just trying to live out, you know, live my life the best way I know how, because every day is a gift. That's right. Amen, brother. <clears throat> Fully agree. I tell my kids, you're not in charge of them. You're in charge of you. That's that's it on a good day. I've heard a guy say that. It's like on a good day, I'm in charge of me. Even then, I better go to bed early that night. <laughs> it's like you, get, you get through that day. I know every one of us, because I've been sitting in the car, every one of us have gone off on that person in, in traffic and all that stuff. And now I could just, I could literally, somebody cut me off. I'm like, hey, get in there, brother. Yeah, nice move. You know, whatever. And uh, get on to work or do, do your thing or whatever. Um, yeah. All right, man, we're going to wrap it up. We're running low on time. Uh, they got a band coming in, sitting up after us on this. I uh, want to go through and thank a couple. I want to give you guys a couple minutes for last words. If you got anything else you want to add, anybody else you want to give a shout out to, I'm going to thank this facility for hosting us and then I'll wrap it off with a toast. toast. Oh, oh, Gary, I wanted to throw this out. This is my favorite cup in the morning. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's my U.S. Army aviation mug that I bought at your flight school graduation, brother. So that felt appropriate. I'm just afraid I'm going to drop it because there's so much concrete around here. So I'm sipping coffee out of this thing. But if I got this cup in my hand and a stick of bacon in the morning looking out off the porch, pretty, pretty happy guy. Uh, Scotty, any closing words, brother? And again, all right, let me let me preface you real quick, because I do I do want to, um, you know, on Memorial Day, I do want to throw this out there and uh, and, and encourage you guys. 
myself, anybody who might be listening to this, um, I think it is time. And there's some crazy stuff going on in our nation. Like I said, every moment in my life has led me to right here. Yeah, encourage you to take on some kind of leadership role. That could be, you know, you're a master chief, you know what that is. I know Gary, you're a small business owner. I know that, but I couldn't find the thing I was looking for, so I created it. And now we've got a, a program called Able Shepherd, and there's like 200 plus people in it. And really, it reminds me, there are people watching. You might not think so, but there are people watching you all day, every day, to try to figure out the kind of man they wanna be. And if we can get more people living like that, I think we can change the country. You can't make people do it, but you can lead and then invite them along with, and I've physically seen it. I've seen us change our community by a guy stepping out and then other amazing dudes backing that up. And then we're gonna, uh, that's, that's the way I think that we can uh, take this country back. Um, and then obviously, you know, like old school, knowing how to handle yourself, knowing how to say please and thank you, sir and ma'am, and talk directly without all the talk around stuff, that people don't talk like that anymore. In this group, I know several that do. I think people need to get back to uh, skipping the BS, being, you know, with grace, being direct with people, shooting them straight, and then do what you're going to say and say what you're going to, uh, you know, say what you're going to do and then, and then follow through and do what you're going to say. So I told Pinkham, I remember when we started doing this business thing, he's one of my business mentors, just absolute gold. I'm going to unveil a lot of the stuff in a different podcast, but it's, man, I want to do this right. And if we can't do it right, if it's dog eat dog, if it's business, I don't want to do it. So like, can we do this right? He's like, we can. I think we've held true to that. So I think that's, that's a way to, there, there's, so, there's so much more going on. We're honoring these guys in everything we do. I'm glorifying God everything I do, and I remember uh, these guys when I'm doing it, and it motivates me to not run out, of, run out of steam. It's truly my passion. Scotty, any final words? I'm gonna keep it simple. It was always said to me, you know, be, be brief, be brilliant, be gone. Jim, you just want to thank you for putting this on because, you know, once again, you're just, you create, you know, something new for us to get together and uh, share experiences and educate people and, and, you know, make someone's day hopefully a little bit better, just like the ride. That was something I'm going to look at for the rest of my life. And that was all you. So thank you again for putting that on. Gary, thank you for being the person you are. You know, I can't say enough good things about the both of you. I'm, I'm going to have you guys in my lives and I'm a better man for it. God bless you guys. God bless America. Love you, brother. Amen to that. Gary Ellis. Now you got to follow that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good luck with that. And I'm, I'm very proud to call you Master Chief, man. That's that's an outstanding accomplishment. And I'm very proud of that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm extremely privileged that we're believers. I want to start off with that, man. I, I really like that, that we believe because I think that's a basis for a lot of the stuff that we're coming from, you know. Um, and I, I think about it all the time. It's, it's, it's one of the, the foundations that I try to gravitate towards with everything, every new I take on. You know, Integrity-based businessmen, no matter no matter what it is, keep it integrity-based so that we can continue to back on this level because of, once again, what Jordan Peterson opened my eyes to about lying. I never realized it, gents, but... Um, because it, we have to kind of admit that a lot of the things we do in the SEAL teams, we are going to run around lying because we can't divulge what we're doing. Um, and to be, I would caution them to be careful with that. Small lies end up really damaging your soul and damaging who you are as a person. That being said, um, something, a, a great thing we learned in the SEAL teams that comes right back around to what you were saying. One of those days in bed, one we all got beat like a champ, man. How to build or taking what we want to do to the next level. Um, that's also very important. And um I, I guess I guess to the, the final closing words might might resound with Memorial Day today, man. Just thankful to be in the same room with you guys. I always am. I always kick myself for not doing it more because when we do this, it's it's very it's very good. It's very favorable. It's going to give me a good weekend. And hopefully uh, the viewers and the listeners might get something out of it. Uh, I'm always available for um, for any of this type of stuff, man. And I hope we can do more of it. It's great to see you two gentlemen. God bless the United States of America and all the men and women who have fought and died to protect you. Amen, my brother. I just want to throw this out there. I brought this just for inspiration. I don't know if you can see that on my screen or your screen, if you can make that out. It's, uh, you know the book. So I uh, want to encourage people this weekend to check out, you know, I don't know, we got 
all this going on times an entire book but the ride for lance check it out um, it's a great way to honor our seal team buddy lance michael vaccaro seal team chief um, i want to close out we got biker gangs coming in all around us and, and running us out of this place now we want to thank uh I want to thank, uh, we're, we're going to finish this with a toast, by the way. They don't get the Coors Light thing, Gary. Every, all my beer snob buddies are like, Dad, you're drinking the Coors Light, all that stuff. You got a Yingling, Scott? Oh, man, Brother Lance. So Lance introduced us to Yingling. If they sold Yingling out here, I'd have one in my hand. Didn't even think of that. But when, it, when, you, when you got, <laughs> right on, when you got that many guys showing up at Green 13, it just became easy. Hey, do you need anything? Even if we didn't, hey man, grab a case or two of Coors Light. And we just kept those hoppers full. But, uh, but hey, I love you guys. Uh, I wanna finish this off. I wanna do a toast and it's just short and sweet, but I wanted to end it correctly. I wrote it down so I wouldn't mess it up. So uh, go ahead and raise a glass, guys. But in with a toast to Lance Vaccaro, to Chad Wilkinson, to, to Bobby, to all of the many heroes and their families who served and invested everything that we may live free. That we may live free. Live well, my brothers. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Cheers. Take care, guys. Have a good one.